circulating using uh, the spray balls that turned up and to be honest I'm not that impressed with them you know I'm gonna have to make do with it now because I'm using them but um yeah they seem to maybe just one ball on its own would have been better than two balls together but I think I might change back to my previous um, homemade um, arms instead but um, yeah, I'm gonna have to make do with this now because uh, it's being used um, I might turn off luckily these I've made these are switchable so I can turn one off um, as you can see here when I turn one off The other one actually works a bit better. So, yeah, I may do that when I'm actually sparging the switch between areas. Who knows? Um, but yeah, so far, not that impressed with two of these spray balls. I may just switch back to what I had previously, which you would have seen in my previous video uh, when I built this sparge arm. I decided mid circulation to um, swap the sparge arms out for the ones I built previously earlier in the week, and I'm much happier, much more of a consistent flow rather than just a, um, everything kind of trickling down the middle of the ball. Uh, so much happier with this. As you can see, it's hitting lots of different areas of the grain bed. Uh, another 15 minutes left to recirculate in and uh, it'll be time for sparging. Okay, in the boil kettle, waiting for it to come up to boiling temperature. I'm going to add, it's called Beer Enhancer, it's uh, basically dextrose and a little bit of malt, um, dried malt extract. I'm going to pour that into as into here, so one kilogram of this is going to go into the kettle. Hooray. Just going to give that a stir. Let's chuck this bag out of the way, that's my old sparge arm over there. Sat to the side, ready to go in the bin. Okay, so very aware that this can go lumpy but once it starts boiling this will just dissolve um, and become part of the wort rather than being lumpy I'm pretty sure I've had a I've used this before in the past and it's yeah you know, it just doesn't leave any lumps anyway let this come up to temperature um, and then I believe we've got um, some hops to add for bittering at the beginning once we get to um, the hop break it's, uh, as you can see I wasn't quite paying attention uh, and I had a massive boil over. Uh, it's under control now, just sprayed it a little bit with cold water. Um, I've got here <clears throat> 10 grams of Columbus. Um, God, it smells, I can smell the wort burning on the side of the um, vessel. Lovely. Um, so, yeah, 10 grams of Columbus, just go straight in. I'm not going to mess about with a hot bag today. Straight in. Uh, next addition is 15 minutes before the end of the protoflock. 15 minutes left. Protoflock. Just flamed out, as you can see, temperature's still high. Uh, just chuck the chiller in, um, and I've now got the um, end of boil additions. Uh, so I've got 25 grams of Amarillo, 25 grams of Mosaic, 25 grams of Simcoe, and 25 grams of Citra, all going straight in. Okay, gravity reading there, got 1.079, 78, 79. Um, which is quite a bit lower than the um, uh, OG that they say in the book, where we're looking for 1.090. So, yeah, it's going to be a little bit less than I was hoping for. Um, yeah, okay, I need to investigate why that is. A bit late now, though. Okay, down to temperature. Um, ready for pitching. I've got uh, rehydrated cross my loof um, parallel yeast, or anything this is. Chuck this in. And I should have swelled the bottom. There's a bit of yeast at the bottom, never mind. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's fine. There we go. day nine time for a massive hop drop uh, we have here 200 grams of 
pellet hops I've got here. Um, it's 50 grams of Citra, 50 grams of Simcoe, 50 grams of Amarillo, 50 grams of Mosaic. All amazing hops to dry hop with. Um, so here we go. Into the what? The beer. Lovely. So I'm going to leave that in there now for the next uh, five days, I believe it is. Five, six days. Uh, I'm going to kick this baby up. Okay, it is kegging day. So it's now 14 days um, since the uh, brew day. Uh, so uh, we've been fermenting now nicely. Kicked off amazingly for about a whole week and then stopped bubbling and then I dry hopped and everything. Um, so here we are. Um, and part of the uh, recipe requires that um, the beer is racked on some cherries. So what I've done is I have here... Um, a 500 gram bag of sour cherries, uh, they're dried, as you can see them here in the colander. Uh, so I've got 250 grams in there, which is what the recipe asks for. And I have um, soaked them in star sand just to kill off any um, germs that may be on it. Um, and they're left there sitting, you can see that a bit of the juice has come off, well I'll do a bit of, kind of star, coloured star sand's come off there. So obviously there's going to be a bit of a red tint that's going to be given to this beer. Um, so yeah, I've got 250 grams left, which would be nice because they're nice to munch on. Uh, and then on top of that, um, I need to add, um, the recipe calls for 5 grams of oak wood chips. I've got here a 50 gram bag. I can't imagine that 5 grams is really going to add much, but so I might dump in about 10 grams to try and get more of an oakiness to it. Um, or I might stick to the recipe. I'm not 100% sure right now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump these... Yeah, I'll stick to the recipe, go with 5 grams, just to, just to be sure, you know, next time if I make this again I can adjust it, but for now, I'm going to stick to the recipe, stick 5 grams into the keg. So I have here um, a clean keg, it's been sat in stuck with star sand in it for, it bubbles at the bottom, um, started, some star sand sat in it for quite a while, um, so I'm now going to dump um, the cherries into... The keg. Um, I've got a star sand sterilized hand here. Um, so I'm just going to literally grab a handful of cherries and dump them in the keg and do that until all the cherries are gone. You know, I could probably find a more a better way of doing this, but you know, our hands are the tools that. We were given when we were born, and they seem to have been doing us fine for thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years. So, they're doing fine now. So, let's just tip the last little bits in. I'm going to spill any of these. Oops, there's some falling over there. Oops, I'm losing some. Never mind, okay. I'll throw those away. I don't really want to dump those in, you know, just in case. I don't want to risk any contamination really at this stage when I've gone so far in being hygienic. Okay, so we have in the bottom there, if you can see that, probably not because there's no light, uh, 200, probably about 240 grams, 45 grams of, of uh, cherries. I'm just going to weigh up some oak chips and get them in there and then we'll start um, dumping the beer on top. Uh, five grams of wood oak chips uh, going in. Okay. Set in the bottom again, you can't see anything because there's no light. Uh, okay, dumping into the keg gently. Um, using a demi John auto siphon today because I broke my um, large auto siphon for beer and I um, forgot to buy a new one. So I've ordered that on Amazon. But obviously it's not going to turn up for today, so uh, this is going to take a little bit longer than it would normally take, but who cares. Have it. Finally, this took absolutely forever, going through a uh, Demijohn um, water siphon. It took like 10 minutes to get it out, I thought it would never stop. So I've got 19 litres in here, there's a tiny little bit of headroom which I'm going to um, uh, purge in a second uh, by spraying, getting some CO2 into the inlet valve and then purging the any headroom so that I know that the whole top part is just CO2. I'm going to leave that to sit for at least a week before I stick it in the keg grater. Yeah, keg grater. Um, so I've done a gravity reading. This one came out at 
0.012, so we're looking at a 9% um, double IPA, which is absolutely brilliant, uh, considering that it was um, it was down on its uh, original gravity slightly. Um, should have been like a 10% um, double IPA or triple IPA, as it says in the recipe, but you know. I, well, they're all the same, aren't they? Um, it's coming at nine percent. Really happy with that. Um, so I'm going to let this sit for two weeks. Sorry, for a week on the cherries, and then I'm going to stick it in the kegerator, start tasting it, see what it see what it's like. It'll probably be two weeks before I stop drinking it in earnest. Um, but for now, this is video over and out, and see you in a couple of weeks when it's time for the taste test.